What's going on, Jerome's? So it was not a great wild card a Sunday for the Minnesota Fine Vikings as the Packers allegedly won, the Lions allegedly won. Did you know that that was their first playoff win in like 33 years? I don't know. I don't know if anyone in the media has uh, informed you about it. Hmm. Uh, but looking around the league, uh, we got tan, tan uh, truths uh, of what's going down around the National Football League. Number one, CJ Stroud is already top five. And I, I know what you're saying. Oh, it's just one game, bro, being a prisoner of the moment. No, it's what Stroud has done all season. And frankly, I mean, the, the Texans had a lot of injuries along the offensive line. Also, he's lost some weapons throughout the season. And C.J. Stroud has overcome. And he, you love his attitude. He's a true natural leader. And his pairing with D'Amico Ryans, they're on the same page. And they're going to do some work. Right. They're going to be good in Houston for a long, long time. Uh, they have key players at key positions, premium positions. Uh, Nico and Tank are, are already a fantastic duo. And I I, I truly think that Houston is going to be tough. Houston's going to be tough for many, many years. And Shroud, maybe to a degree it's a prisoner of the moment thing, but I mean, look, look around the top five. Like Who else would you have in there? You have Lamar. I guess you wouldn't have Dak in there anymore, uh, but you'd have Lamar. You would have Josh Allen. You would have, gosh, who else would you have? Maybe Patrick Mahomes. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, but Stroud's are already flirting uh, with that tier one of quarterbacks because, I mean, who, who would you want right now? Straight up. Would you want C.J. Stroud or Tua? It's pr- pretty easy. Would you want C.J. Stroud or Dak? Pretty easy. Would you want C.J. Stroud or Justin Herbert? That one gets a little bit dicey because right, Herbert's already getting paid. All right, so, uh, and again, having uh, your starting quarterback on his rookie deal is the ultimate competitive advantage uh, in the National Football League, especially if the kid is a baller. All right, number two, adios mio. So the Packers could be a problem. Yeah, and... Again, this is Tell the Truth Monday, and of course, we as a Vikings fan, what we love uh, wearing the purple sun, purple tinted sunglasses and sipping on the purple drink and drinking the purple Kool-Aid, but Jordan Love actually looks pretty good. He didn't look very good when the Vikings played the Packers at Lambeau. Mm, not, not saying, I'm just saying, but the Packers are looking good. Jaden Reed and Dubs and all, all those weapons are looking really damn good. Uh, the, the Packers, they are, they always had the talent, especially in that front seven, but Joe Barry was Garbaggio in the middle of the season. It seems to be getting uh, their ish together now. And they are the youngest team in the league. I don't know if the media has pointed that out maybe a time or two. Did you know that Antonio Gates also played basketball? Uh, but, yeah, Packers could be tough. And, uh, again, it's just, it just so meant, like, the Vikings have at least had a couple franchise quarterbacks, but if you're a Bears fan, and, and yes, Packers Bears is probably you know a notch up just in terms of historical relevance, uh, in terms of the rivalries. Like if you're a Bears fan, and and you look like, hey, they took some jabroni from Utah State, who who played like eight man football, and then all of a sudden he turns into the the third coming, and you, you're just sitting here, well. Justin Fields was an All-American at Ohio State, and he looked really good in the playoff, and we ruined him. And if we take Caleb Williams at one or whoever, we'll probably ruin them. I don't know, man. I, I don't know. Next up, number three, the Lions are a problem. All right, so for all of his bluster and, and whatnot, like Dan Campbell, I, I think he's a good coach. I, I think he's a good motivator. Is he you know, a razor-sharp X's and O's guy? No, but also I don't think you have to be. And the thing about Campbell is, like, you know, people forget because he, he's he was never a full time offensive coordinator. Like he has an offensive background. Like right? he he's coached that side of the ball. He was a tight end for many. He was a blocking tight end for many years. Like he he was basically Josh Oliver. Hmm. Uh, maybe Josh Oliver is going to take over and bite kneecaps and stuff. But uh, I I think that Dan Campbell is very smart with the EQ uh, part of the game, uh, the emotional intelligence, managing of uh, the the locker room. Now is he? About as sharp as a marble when it comes to game management, yes. Is he always just rolling the dice? Yes. But also, I, I think there's a method there because way too many coaches coach not to lose. And Dan Campbell coaches to win. And sometimes it bites him square in the ass. But sometimes it works out. Like throwing on second and nine uh, to end the game uh, versus just uh, you know, conventional wisdom. Just run, run, punt, uh, and then give uh, Stafford a chance. Like you can end the game right there. All right? And uh, I think that 
Kevin O'Connell, like he's still learning on the job. I mean, Campbell's in year three. Kevin O'Connell was in year two. I mean, there, there's some time, especially at the end of the game, that where you wish he would be a little bit more aggressive. But also, I really like that Campbell, I mean, even though he's an offensive-minded guy, he has an offensive coordinator, Ben Johnson, who's going to be a head coach. So he, he takes his ego out of it because when he got the Lions job, he could have been like, I'm calling the plays. Hmm. My, my turn is my shot, right? But I, I think Campbell understands that maybe if he's not the sharpest tool in the shed when it comes to X's and O's, that, that doesn't have to be his job. It's like, yeah, it's great when head coaches call plays. You look at uh, Andy Reid. Do you look at other coaches that shall not be named? Hmm. Uh, but ultimately, at the end of the day, your job is to have the bandwidth and wherewithal to coach the entire team. Just don't be the coordinator with the challenge flag. But, I mean, they play hard for Dan Campbell. Offensively, they got weapons all over the place. Amonra, for my money, might be the slot uh, best slot receiver in the game. Offensive line, they've sunk a ton of resources in it. Brad Holmes had three straight stud drafts. Lions are a problem, and defensively, they are going to get better. Uh, I, I mean, I mean, Aaron, Aaron Glenn is sort of hit or miss, uh, but also, I mean, their talent. They've had injuries, uh, but I, I think they are starting to shape up a little bit on that side of the ball. Lions are going to be tough. Lions are going to be tough, and and. You know, Gessling pointed this out. Also, I, I feel like the Vikings beat writers, like, they take a perverse pleasure in just, like, tweaking the fan base a little bit because, I don't know, m- maybe it gets more engagement with their numbers just being negative. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe we should go negative. Probably get better numbers. Hmm. Uh, but Gessling just, like, sticking this in. Uh, top 100 picks in the 2024 draft. Packers, five because of the eight, eight round Rodgers trade. Uh, Lions, four. Uh, Bears, three. Oh, the you know, Lions have four because of the Hawkinson trade. Mm. Uh, Bears have three, including one and nine. The Vikings have two, first and the second, uh, one, uh, 11 and 42. Uh, effective cap space, uh, Lions 46, uh, Bears 36.4, uh, Vikings 21.5. That That's that, that's actually a little bit off because of the void years coming with Daniil uh, and Kirk, potentially. Mm. Packers minus 3.5. Uh, big decisions, all four teams, blah, 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 blah. So either way, like this is not going to be – the the NFC South, like all, all four teams are going to be competitive or they are really damn good. And the Vikings really better keep up because uh, we'll get to the Vikings at the end. Number four, Cowboys are frauds. Now, I, I don't want to hear, well, Dak Prescott had a really good touchdown interception ratio against bad teams. Congratulations. I mean, the Cowboys straight up could not hang with good teams this year uh, and they could only win at home except for. Uh, do you know the Packers have more playoff wins in AT and T Stadium with three uh, than the 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 pa- than the Cowboys have with two? That's crazy. It's crazy, man. But I mean, the Cowboys are, are always pumped up. They're always hyped up. Oh, American America's team. Oh, Dak. Blah blah blah. But Dak just wilts in, in big time situations. Mike McCarthy is a great regular season coach uh, against bad teams, but can't get it done in the clutch and. He, he, well, well, the Packers were won the Super Bowl as a six seed in 2010, blah, blah, blah. Congratulations. Got lightning in a bottle. It happens. Cer- certainly does. But is Mike McCarthy a good coach? No. Is Mike McCarthy going to get his ass fired today? Yes. Uh, and I think that – I think Jerry Jones is just going to say, F it. We're going to wash everyone out. Uh, Mike McCarthy, you're fired. We're bringing in Belichick. And, hell, maybe they get rid of Dak. It's possible, man. It's crazy. Crazy to think about, but it's possible. Number five, don't forget about the 49ers. And, and, ooh. Also, the Ravens either. So, this is what happens Wild Card Weekend. So, the – well, it used to be the top two seeds in each conference, but s- since it went to only one team in each conference gets a bye, people forget about the one seeds because it's sort of out of sight, out of mind, and sometimes at the end of the season they're resting starters anyway because uh, they got things sutured up. But, I mean, everyone's talking about, oh, here come the Lions. Oh, here come the Packers. Oh, blah, 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 blah. But <sighs> – don't forget, the Niners are bad MFers, and same thing with the Baltimore Ravens. And I still think that's going to be the odds-on favorite for the Super Bowl matchup. But, I don't know, th- things – I I understand everyone wants to hype up the Lions. Everyone wants to hype up the Packers. But uh, watch the Niners just control the line of scrimmage, punch uh, the Packers repeatedly in the face with McCaffrey, with Debo, uh, with Kittle, and Brock Purdy does just enough. And then that San Francisco 49ers defense completely makes Jordan Love look like uh, look look like an adolescent. Uh, I think that's what's going to happen. Uh, uh, I, I don't like laying double digits. But I think the Niners are just going to completely put the bang thing on, on the Packers. I think it might be like a 31-20 to 20, uh, type game. 
but I, I still think that they cover. I think they get it done. And the Ravens, Ravens waiting to see uh, who the hell advances from. Uh, if the Steelers win, it's going to be the Steelers Ravens. Uh, if not, it's whatever. But I mean, Baltimore. I mean, L- Lamar had an MVP season this year for a reason, and Todd Munkin is getting head coaching interviews for a reason and that defense with the Ravens Mike McDonald is getting head coaching interview requests for a reason so I mean the Ravens are just really damn good in all facets man and they they're a bully in the trenches on both sides the defensive front seven just regenerates itself all the time Justin Matabuke uh, is all of a sudden one of the best defensive interiors in the league and they got Queen and Roquan just patrolling the middle this Ravens team is going to be tough this Ravens team is going to be really, really tough, man. And uh, again, I think with Wild Card Weekend, it's very easy to forget about things. But yeah, don't forget about the ones. Like this is not going to be a year where the the one seeds are just one and dones. And you've seen that happen quite a bit in the past. Don't see that this time around, man. And plus, I mean, they play great at home, both teams. Number seven, Taylor Swift is overblown. Now, I I, I will I will say this. Initially, I was sort of annoyed by it mainly because she skipped Minneapolis. But she went. She went to every other game. Now she's literally just a, another supportive, uh, significant other, cheering, cheering on uh, her husband or boyfriend. So it's whatever. And I, I feel like people get too in their trenches, like, and then they just try to troll each other back and forth. Whereas, like, Taylor Swift is ruining the game. Blah blah blah. Something America. Uh, and then the Swifties, uh, you know, uh, uh, swing back, and I don't know. It's just who cares? Who cares at this point? Where? I feel like the coverage, it's whatever, and I honestly do do not care. <laughs> I, I I really don't. And also the Swifties uh, during the Lions game were like, oh, they're showing uh, Eminem, so obviously he's ruining the game. It's so stupid. Oh, where'd that go? Mm. Uh, number se- uh, number eight, the Bills could be a team of destiny. Now, again, it's a little bit of out of sight, out of mind, because the Bills had their game delayed. But they're at home. They should take care of the Steelers. They're double-digit favorites for a reason. And, I mean, the Bills The Bills are the ultimate streak team where they could be hot and cold on a given day. You know, Josh Allen and Diggs uh, can certainly play above the rim. Their defense, ton of injuries, uh, but they can certainly get after things. But, I mean, could they make a run? Maybe. I don't know. Like, I, I don't really like their chances matching up against the Ravens. But then, then again, who 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 do I like at all? Mm. Uh, but I I feel like since the Bills, it's so stupid. Uh, ever since uh, the revelations that McDermott made that nine eleven reference, uh, they've gone undefeated. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. Like, I just don't want the Packers Alliance to win the Super Bowl. That's it. And I I know that some people are like, well, uh, the more that they win, the more they ruin their draft pick. Who cares? Like, it does not impact anything whether the Packers draft at 24 or if they draft at 30 no it's it, it's besides the point I do not want the, their fan bases to be happy because screw them you could be like oh well the Lions fans have been waiting for so long yeah do, do you think the Lions fans celebrated the Vikings win the division last year hmm? do you think the Vikings uh the Lions fans are going to celebrate the Lion the Vikings winning a uh, the division next year winning uh playoff games win the Super Bowl next year you think that's what it's going to be please Please, please. I mean, it's professional sports. These aren't charity cases. I mean, screw the Lions. Hey, if you want to win a, a playoff game in over three decades, win a playoff game. No one's stopping you. This is America. You can get better, even if you're the Lions. There you go. Uh, next up, number nine, Eagles getting exposed tonight. So the Eagles, ton of injuries. A.J. Brown is out, and you know Jalen Hurts has that effed up finger. And the Buccaneers, I mean, the defense is pretty legit. Uh, Baker Mayfield's a little bit banged up, but – I think the Eagles just get torched tonight. Uh, and the Bucks. I mean, the Bucks are no great shakes, but they are at home. And the Eagles, I mean, the Eagles were the worst 10-1 team in NFL history. And everyone knew it. They're, they're even worse than what the, that Steelers team a, a fistful of years ago that started off 11-0 and were eliminated in the first round of the playoffs, I want to say. Uh, but the Eagles, the Eagles are going to get exposed tonight. And I can't wait. And also, I think that Nick Sirianni is going to get fired. And I, it's less about results. I mean, Super Bowl last year, 10-1 started this year, blah, blah, blah. But it's about egos and getting along with one another. And I, I don't think that Sirianni and uh, and Howard, uh, Howie Roseman, get along. So I think it's going to be curtains. I think it's going to be it. And then all of a sudden, I mean, the Eagles' job 
you raise an eyebrow a little bit, but A.J. Brown could want out. Jalen Hurts, are, are you convinced that he's elite? Uh, defense has had a ton of injuries and was gutted last year by free agency. Um, I mean, is it is it a great destination job? Who knows? I, I guess we'll find out. Lastly, number 10, Vikings have work to do. So here's the thing. I understand the whole competitive rebuild. I understand that you can blame this season 7-10 to 10 on injuries. Fully understand that. But you look what Holmes and Campbell with the Lions, what they've done in year three, that is the bar for the Vikings next year. That's the bar for Quasey. That's the bar for Kevin O'Connell. And no excuses. No excuses. Go out and get it done. And he got a lot of decisions this offseason. Do you resign Kirk? Do you go all in after your quarterback of the future? What happens with JJ? Are you going to rebuild the trenches? I think you should. I think you certainly should. Uh, is Quasey going to have a draft pick that actually gets on the field? <laughs> who knows? It's, it's asking a lot. I know it is, but who, who knows, man? But... Yeah, the NFC North is going to be it's going to be tough for a while, but that's okay. The Vikings just have to amp up their game and um, compete, compete, compete. Hell, maybe we should bring in Pete. I don't know, man. But uh, that's it. That's it. Uh, tell the truth Monday. Ten truths from around the league. You guys are the best. You know what to do. Skull production value.